What's going on everyone? Happy Friday and welcome back to my channel. Hopefully everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy, having a great day so far, and testing negative for all those viruses that can make us sick. It is time now for the Friday edition of the Virus Update for Friday, November 7th, 2025. If you are new to my channel, welcome to my channel. This is where I do the daily virus update on all those viruses that can make us sick. Want to stay informed about them and be in the know before it's too late and you end up getting sick? Well, just subscribe to my channel down below. If you like today's video, please, if you could, give this a thumbs up down below. Hit that notification bell. Share this video with anyone you know. And if something strikes a comment in your mind, well, then leave it down below in the comments section. Alrighty, we do have several news stories and several things to talk about today. Then we'll take a look at some daily data, maybe some wastewater at the end of this video. I don't want this video going over 20 minutes, so we'll see if we have time to get to wastewater. Starting off with this over in Spain. Now, we've been watching flu cases go up over in the UK. Uh, flu cases go up in Japan, and in some cases, flu is still a problem over in Australia as well. Well, now we are learning that flu cases are surging across Spain, and children are at the center of it, according to this article from Euro Weekly News. Yes, as the weather cools and windows start staying shut, Spain is heading into that familiar part of the year when coughs echo in classrooms and supermarket queues. Uh, yes, it is that time of year. Between October 27th and November 2nd, the rate of flu cases rose from 16.7 to 20.3 per 100,000 people. Now, they say on paper, that may not sound dramatic, but it is higher than what Spain saw at this stage last year and the year before. So, hey, they're already starting on a higher note. We've seen a lot of places starting on a higher note. And unfortunately, I think in time, that may be the case here in the United States. I don't know. So many other places are doing it. Ugh, I hate to say it. It could happen here. Speaking of flu in the United States, here we go. First flu death of the season reported in Clark County. This is in Nevada. Yes, Las Vegas area. Seeing its first flu death of the season. It is involving a man in his 80s from Clark County. So, yes, flu. It is starting to pick up now. Uh, take a look at this. Linden High School takes precautions after whooping cough illness. Yes, Linden High School. This is in Michigan. I had to actually look this one up. It is in, I believe, Western Michigan. And, uh, yes, it is leading to, uh, precautions need to be taken. We've seen whooping cough cases pop up in schools several times this year. And we actually have another school illness to talk about. We'll get to that in just a second. My website, datareport.info. It's a great place to uh, see what I'm tracking. There are many different tracking threads. In fact, we have 14 topics over in the tracking threads. We're going to take a look at one now. Here's the 2025 tracking threads. And, oh, look at this, the most recent one updated this morning, which is the U.S. school illness tracking thread because I added yet another illness. And take a look at this. Michigan, once again, yes, that's two Michigan schools. Michigan, Stockbridge, community schools closed due to illness. And I actually added a note. It looks like this is due to the number of bus drivers that are out sick. Let's click on the article. And sure enough, that is what it says. It is because of the number of bus drivers. They only had two bus drivers available to get to the kids to school. I don't know how big the school district is, but uh, yeah, I would say two bus drivers is probably not enough to get an entire school to uh, entire school's worth of kids in the class. Yeah, I don't think two bus drivers is going to cut it. All right, moving on to this. British Columbia now, 18 poultry farms in B.C. dealing with avian flu outbreaks. Ah, this is something that we've been talking about a little bit too much because it's been around quite a bit once again. I know, as soon as the colder weather hit, the birds started migrating south. You know, the birds migrate in different directions all around the world. Here in North America, it's from north to south. And with that comes the risk of spreading bird flu, and colder weather brings that risk as well. And, well, bird flu, it is spreading once again. All right, moving on now to this from Ryan Hisner. BA.3.2 has arrived in the UK. One BA.3.2.2 collected sample on October 5th was uploaded from Scotland today. Um, they're just now finding about this there. Um, they're just now finding a sample of this in the UK, which tells me 
BA.3.2 is not spreading very fast. Could it still become the next big thing? I suppose it could, but the chances of that have probably dropped some because it's been around for so long and it just hasn't gone widespread all that fast. So, yeah, obviously, eventually you're going to find a case of it or a sample of it here and there, and the UK has done just that. Moving on to this in the United States, Orange County, California reports the lowest COVID positivity rate since the week ending March 1st at 2.9%. As of November 1st. Now, I should mention something. I apologize. We just talked about a variant. This BA.3.2. That is a COVID variant. Which is uh, what causes new cases of COVID. You know, each uh, variant got, runs its course. And then another variant forms. And another one. And another one. Yeah, we've been doing this a while. We've been doing COVID variants since 2020. Yeah, oh, it's been it's been a, such a long pandemic. That never seems to want to end. All right. Uh, yeah, so again, COVID positivity in Orange County, California, 2.9%. And now moving on to Australia with a few things from Daz the COVID Info Guy. Now, we kind of have a bad trend starting in some parts of Australia. And it's going to lead up to something here. I'll, let's go through some of the numbers first. Western Australia, weekly COVID update week ending November 2nd, 2025. The COVID positivity rate is 1.8%. Now, that doesn't look to be all that high, but... What we do not like to see is the fact that it's up by 0.2%. PCR cases, 81. That's up by 14%. Hospitalization cases increased to an average of 18 per day, up by 20%. ICU, 7-day average increased to 2 cases. Now, that's not a big number, but that is up by 100%. So, it doubled, essentially. So, uh, yeah, things may be starting to go up again in parts of Australia. South Australia, similar deal. Weekly respiratory update, November 1st to November 7th of 2025. Reported cases of COVID, 110. Yeah, that's actually up by 13.4%. So again, 110, up 13.4%. Hey, but it doesn't stop there in this region. Flu, 501 cases, that's up by 12%. RSV, 133 cases, that's up by 4.7%. Pertussis, 77 cases, that's down though by 8.3 percent deaths reported in 2025 COVID 68 that's up by four flu 61 that's up by 35 that's a big increase for flu there rsv 12 that's up by seven pertussis five that is up by five now when we talk about increases for covid or the viruses in general oftentimes the uh, levels of these viruses is what drives the number of views i actually get on this channel allow me to explain we've done this before First off, Biobot today, this is from Mike Horger, today, national SARS-CoV-2 concentrations have started increasing, and he is referring to the United States. You can see the Northeast is rising, the West Coast is rising. Yeah, overall, things have started to go up once again in the United States. And you can see here, back in September, we peaked. That's when the United States peaked. The UK was still rising because... I believe the UK, when it comes to COVID, may now follow the United States. I can't confirm that, but it just would appear that that's happening from time to time. The UK going up alone doesn't really uh, drive our views here on the channel. When we picked in the United States, my views for these virus updates and anything else I do also peaked and started dropping. Well, guess what? See this little increase here for wastewater in the United States? Take a look at this. Uh-huh. Our views here on the channel are now starting to go up once again. It's been a good indicator for about as long as I've had this channel. There were a few periods where I did not post or I took a few days off. It was inaccurate then. But during the periods where I have gone every single day without a video, without stopping, uh, we can pretty much tell when either COVID or some other virus is really starting to take off in the United States. And I think in this case, it may be we have flu going up in so many parts of the world. People are probably searching for that. And now, potentially, COVID going back up once again in the United States. You can that over the last seven days, we've had an 18% increase in views. Watch time's been going up. Hey, 50% increase. Subscribers going up, but don't pay attention to that number. I don't know what's going on with that. But the big thing is views. And we'll see what happens. We will follow this metric uh, throughout the, this tool. I guess it is. You could call it a tool. We'll follow this tool throughout the wave. And all the faster you start seeing this go up. I guess good for growing a channel, the more these viruses are increasing. Last year, my views even 
showed that double peaking that we had, and it did, to a degree, show the summertime. Now, it's not perfect, but uh, right when we were supposed to have peaked in the United States for COVID, that was one of our highest viewed days of the summer surge. How about that? All right, one more piece of news. Not really news. This is data. Uh, the measles update for this week in the United States. 1,681 confirmed measles cases reported in the United States. And among these uh, were reported in 42 jurisdictions. So that's as of November 4th. Again, do I think we're going to get to 2,000 measles cases in the United States? Uh, we are getting closer, man. I don't know. We'll have to see. I think even if we don't get there, we've likely missed cases. So that alone probably would put us over 2,000 at the end of this year. In case you did not see the UK update yesterday, I do want to refresh this. I wasn't certain if these were the correct numbers or not, but uh, the UK had 1,571 new cases of COVID. Weekly deaths were 145, and everything did drop. Uh, this healthcare number, that did not actually update, and the um, positivity rate is still dropping at this time. Influenza in the UK, yes, this is a problem. 11.6% positivity rate, that's up significantly, and you can see here, it is continuing to rise at this point, and last year they peaked on December 23rd at 27.31%, and you do note here, the UK did not have that double peaking that we had here in the United States. Do I think the US is going to have a double peaking again this year? I honestly can't answer that question. I just can't. Uh, we'll have to see what happens as time goes on. Taking a look at what's going on in Canada, COVID-19 is moderate, flu A is moderate, flu B not detected, and RSV is listed at moderate at this time. All right, let's take a look at what's going on with the air qualities here in the United States. And while that's refreshing, let's pause and take that hydration break, shall we? All righty. Taking a look here, we do have some problem spots. Uh, the West Coast is getting better, but if you look, California, Oregon, Washington, still along the coastal areas, just east of those mountains, uh, still some reds and oranges. That's not good. And then as you make your way to the east, yeah, the Great Lakes, the Midwest, uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, portions of Alabama, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Western Pennsylvania, West Virginia, even back across Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas, a little bit. Yeah, we have some uh, poor air quality here. I don't actually know what's causing that. I don't think there's any wildfire issue in that area. I do know there is a surge of warm air ahead of a uh, cold front, which is going to bring really cold air into the east. Yeah, I don't have that queued up to talk about that. We'll be talking about it over the weekend, but I'm just going to give you a little brief uh, summary of what's going on here, because this is important. There's cold air that's coming out of Canada. It's going to make its way into the east. And things are going to go below average, even all the way down into Florida. It's going to cause a lot of people to go inside. It could cause more cases of these viruses. I should probably do a post on X about that. I've done it in the past, and it does seem to uh, work out quite well, because the viruses, you know, oftentimes they love when we're indoors, especially COVID. And, well, this cold air that's coming, it's going to force people to be indoors. Pinellas County, you know, when it gets really cold, some schools don't do uh, recess. Yeah, that could be the case with it. It could literally be that cold in some places. And here we are only in November. All right, Pinellas County, Florida. We do see some calls going on today. We don't see as many sick person calls as we have been seeing lately, which that is some good news. Taking a look at what is going on in Maryland. And again, if you did not see yesterday, there's a problem in Maryland. Some hospitals are filling up. Now, they do have a scale of 1 to 4, 1 being 0 to 75% occupied, 2 being 76 to 100%, 3 being 101 to 130% occupied at the emergency department, and level 4, well, that's 131% or higher. And oftentimes, what will happen if a hospital is filled up and they don't have any beds? Well, patients are stuck waiting in the emergency room so they can get them up to a bed. Yeah. And you can see here, again, look at 3. 3 is... 101 to 130%. And, yeah, there's a lot of threes. There's some ones there. But uh, there's definitely a lot of threes, even some fours showing up. So, yeah, it looks pretty busy here. And some are saying, well, there's a lot of ones. That's not that bad. And yeah, the other numbers outnumber the number of ones at this point. And when I looked at it this morning, it wasn't anywhere near this high. It's actually, uh, it gets worse throughout the day. That's how it works. Mornings start off quiet at hospitals, and then, as the day goes on, it gets busier and busier. That seems to be the way things work. EMS calls in 
Philadelphia. We want to see Thursday's number if we can. There it is. 750 EMS calls. We've been below 800 more times than not. That's actually been really good lately. Let's see. Is there any update on flu data in Philadelphia? I'm not really seeing anything here. Uh, nothing that's really sticking out. And it even says here September 27, so we can skip right over that. Taking a look at what's going on in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, we do see uh, quite a few EMS incidents. 17 going on at the moment. That's not a good thing. Taking a look at what's going on in Chester County, and we do see a few calls at this time. Sick person showing up, respiratory difficulty, and some other things going on at this time. 911 incidents for EMS in Box County, Pennsylvania, shows that there are eight of them at this time. Stroke is showing up. Uh, quite a bit. You know, there's been a lot of stroke calls lately. Uh, it's not a good thing. Not not a good thing whatsoever. Taking a look at what's going on with the hospitals in New Jersey. Uh, we do see a specialty issue at Inspire Medical Center Mannington. Yeah, that's it at this time. Taking a look in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has been really good. Unlike Maryland, which is just south of Pennsylvania, uh, we've been doing really well. And I wonder, I question, are some of these hospitals just not updating now? I, I gotta wonder that because even at the beginning of the law and halfway through this law that we're in, which we're coming out of for COVID, there were a lot of hospitals just yellow here continuously. I don't know. I really don't understand. Taking a look at what's going on in New York State. 359 people have tested positive on the most recent update. Taking a look at what's going on with the hospital situation, which updated yesterday. 298 hospital admissions. You can clearly see here, they're not dropping as fast. They have actually leveled off at this point. All right, let's take a look at what's going on with wastewater, and we do have it set for Colorado. Why? Well, I got a note here that we need to check out Colorado. We'll look at Colorado's dashboard over the weekend. Uh, taking a look at what's going on at the South Parker wastewater site, if we can. Let's refresh this, shall we? Sometimes it gets stuck on a nationwide level. I don't know why, but measles at this time. Not doing too bad. COVID is low. RSV not detected. But look at influenza A. Now, there's no level being detected here. But take a look at that. Influenza A is increasing in this region of Colorado at this time. That is relatively concerning. That's something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Because it's getting to be that time of year where flu. It did definitely. It just keeps going up. All right. Take a look at what's going on with the COVID levels. Medium in the Northeast. Medium in the Midwest. Low in the west and low in the south. When we take a look at the nationwide chart, we can clearly see here, COVID. Yeah, it was still dropping. Now it's not really dropping that much. And in fact, it's leveling off. And you know what happens after it levels off? It starts going back up. And it's going to be doing that relatively soon. You can also see here, though low, influenza A is rising slightly. Same with RSV. Influenza B, not bad at this time. Norovirus is medium and starting to rise at this time. Alrighty, folks, that does it for today's virus update. The next virus update will be tomorrow, and it will be an out-in-the-wild update. Look for it sometime early in the afternoon is when I'm going to release that or record it. And if you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe down below, hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know, and leave your comments down below. I will see everyone tomorrow from Out in the Wild and on Sunday for the Wastewater Sunday video. Until I see you again tomorrow, have a fantastic Friday afternoon, and thanks for watching.